Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show, Fernando. Welcome to the show. Cleaning the inside of the car out. What do we have today? Funny you should ask. We have a Jeep Gladiator that is getting the new Stinger High 10 Jeep kit. So today, we're gonna walk you through the process of deconstructing this dash so that we can put in the new High 10. Let's hop in and take a look at the factory radio and all the pieces that we're going to be replacing here today and why if you own a Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator you may want to do this. This particular one has the tinier screen inside of it. As we get this out we'll show you why we can't just put a new double din in here. It has to be something that's narrow. Down here you have the accessories panel, you have an aux, USB-C and a USB and then in the back it has this which is the high res camera. It's a high definition camera that cannot go into an aftermarket radio. One of the products we're going to talk about is that it has a switcher built into it that is going to feed that camera into the HDMI input of the high 10 so that we can have the high res camera displayed on the screen up front. Let's see what it looks like in the factory radio right now. Dude, that is super crisp. It's definitely a lot nicer than what we see from the factory most of the time. A lot of detail going on in there. We're also going to be able to Container, steering wheel controls and there's some bonus stuff we're gonna get also with the new radio well, let's head over to the bench let's unbox it let's take a look at all the pieces and then we'll come back into the car once Fernando gets done cleaning it and we'll take the dash apart this is the SRK JW 18EH this is available for the 18 to 20 Jeep Wrangler JLs and the 20 Jeep Gladiator JTs you can use this with either the high 10 or the elevate Opening it up, welcome your new high 10. Download the user guide, the installation manual. If you're gonna retain the factory Sirius XM, pick yourself up a SAT-01. There's a PacLink PL1 module, a 12 inch and a six inch extension cable, the CH4A JW18 radio installation adapter. This is the module that's gonna talk to the factory, translate that over for our high 10 or elevate. HD camera retention module, the HD CBL12, HDMI my 12 inch extension, the USB UN1 factory USB adapter, the BAA22 antenna adapter, a chime speaker, bag with two screws, butterflies, and some double sided tape, some zip ties. In the box, there's two dash kits. This particular kit is for the Elevate, and this kit is for our high 10. This is the MQS 4PT36 harness, the master main power harness, and a USB UN2 6 foot USB extension. There's also the mounting brackets for the radio for the kit. Two little pieces of double-sided tape. Naturally, when you unbox a radio like this with all these little parts, it's best to lay them out somewhere so as you need them, you can go pick them up. I've laid everything out on the table. You can quickly come over and grab it. I've broken it into sections. This is all my USB HDMI, antenna adapters, hardware, brains, the speaker, dash kit, and then main harnesses are laid out here. That way as I'm looking through the instructions as I need something I know where it's at on my table. Next let's open up the high 10 inside there. We of course have the all important screen brain for the unit. It is a single DIN short chassis. That's one of the reasons why we can use this is because it is smaller. They both have onboard CarPlay and Android Auto. If you'd like an onboard navigation you can buy an optional one from them for it and it's a micro SD card that plugs into this slot here. On the back side, we have all our inputs and outputs. The USB, which is dual, is countersunk so that those longer USBs will be able to go into dashes and not get in the way. The HDMI located over here is also countersunk. As we get to the harnesses, we'll talk about where they need to plug in. This piece here is the mounting bracket for the screen. It's designed to be mounted a couple different ways. This allows it to be mounted into a double DIN location. This is the fill boot four around it so when you're looking to the left and right top or bottom you don't see any of this and then there's a parts box inside the parts box the antenna for GPS this is to help both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay as well as if you do get the onboard navigation for it there are two screws
screen extension cables. These cables are for connecting this unit here with the main screen. This is an added back bracket for the screen itself. You can add it on here. This will allow you to pivot the screen more towards your viewing angle if you're gonna be mounting it in a standalone application. There are a ton of little harnesses inside of this that need to keep track of our multi-camera input harness, our steering wheel input harness, our aux input cables, as well as our six RCA inputs, both front, rear, and sub, our hands-free microphone, the input for the microphone, input for Sirius XM, main power harness for the unit, the mounting bracket for this kit to turn it into the double din, a piece of back strapping, two bags of screws for assembling it together, a screen wipe, ton of stuff, lots of little bags. I'm gonna put these over onto the bench and lay them out in order. With all the new parts added to the table, there's still a method to all this. Main wiring harness, harness for the back of the radio. All my auxiliary harnesses are placed here. Anything that's gonna have to do with cable extensions are located on this end. The radio is set inside of the kit, all the parts added in the screws to that location there. These are all the pieces that we may or may not need for this installation. Don't freak out if you don't use something. As we go, we'll eliminate the things we don't need and store those away. Next, we'll take a look at the manual. Installers, four important steps for installation. Download the installation manual. Check for updates on the Hi10 system firmware, vehicle specific user guides, and if you need help. Let's start with step one. As a QR code, launch our camera, scan the QR code. It takes us to the pack homepage, scroll up. Vehicle application guide, unboxing videos, installation videos, user guides, installation manual. Click to download installation manual. All right, now we have the information we need. We can hop into the car and get the dash apart. Step two, once you've installed and powered up the system, then you'll check for updates. The included postcard you should give to the end user, but you may want to look over the user guide to become familiar with the vehicle specific feature settings. So we'll save this and go put it over on the box. And this piece here is the install setup guide. Accessing the installer settings. This will come back to once we've powered up the radio and we can get into these menus. It walks you through where to look for the firmware version, how to download the firmware version, updating the system, system resets. Updating the system is something that's important. These boxes may be sitting on the shelf for a while before they get installed in your car or before you buy them to install in your car. Updates may have come out in those couple months. Always make sure you check. Let's hop into the vehicle and start taking this car apart. I've opened it up inside of my iPad so I can get a better look at it. Step one is to remove this knee buster over here. Start in the top corner here and start working your way down. Next, we need to remove the air conditioning slash volume control panel along with the starter feature here and slowly work your way around. Unplug both harnesses. At the bottom of the trim bezel located here and here are, are two seven millimeter screws. They are also Phillips. I prefer to use the seven millimeter. Starting at the bottom, work your way up to the top. Remove the panel. Four of those same seven screws located around the screen. Pull the panel straight out, far as it'll go, because you're gonna have to turn it down like this. As you can see, having some form of a cloth there is very useful. On the passenger side here, this fatter cable with the white end, this is our FM antenna. On the driver's side with the blue end is going to be our Sirius XM. Sirius XM is typically gonna be like a weird yellow color, which if you look at the radio itself, it has that yellow color to it. The main harness, start on the passenger side, Push the clip and it arms open and will slide out. On the bottom of the radio, we have a red antenna looking cable as well as the gray USB input. This is the whole of the radio. Depending on which version of this you have, you may have an extra two antenna adapters here as well as something located down here in the bottom. Next is removing the glove box. Pull the glove box down. On the driver's side, there is a retaining clip. It pulls up at an angle like this. On the top, there is a stopper push that in and then the whole thing will slide out. We have to get to the factory USB adapter back here. That's what that six foot adapter was for. Start by removing these two torque screws here and here and that will allow the back panel to pop off. The screws are T20s. We recommend you have some form of a bin to put all your screws in so you don't lose them or put them somewhere else in the car. Go around to the back side of the panel. Thing has to come this way. 
It is a tight panel. These are metal clips that are holding it in place, unlike the plastic ones that are on the front of the dash. The cable that we're trying to get to is located here in the corner next to the passenger seat. Unclip and remove it. On the end here, it has a little push down. Get in there, it's, it's a tough one, so push hard, slide it directly out. The next step is removing this side panel here. Start at the bottom and work your way towards the top. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on one of these cool panel tools that Fernando's using inside of this, you can find those on dnftooldrawer.com. Remove the A-pillar, start by popping off the caps to get to the screws. Located inside are two 10 millimeter bolts. With the two 10 millimeter bolts out, one of the steps it does not tell you to do in the instruction manual to get this A pillar off, you do have to remove the speaker cover in the corner. It has four clips in it. Start at one of the corners and gently pry up. Here are what those four clips look like. As you can see, the A pillar sits underneath that grill. Now give it a slight tug and the A pillar will come right out. The last step they have for us is removing this piece here, which according to the instructions has T25 screws. Two here, one here, one here, and then there's two more up here on the top. Pull it directly back towards you and it will slide right off. There is one clip located here, but there's these two teeth located here that if you twist it, will bind the unit up. According to the instructions, we have all the parts of the car apart that we need to remove in order to start this installation. That means we're gonna head back over to the bench and start the assembly of the kit. Heading over to the parts bench, grab my first bag, which is the bracket to mount the main brain behind the radio. There's three pieces inside of it along with a bag of screws and clips. On the side brackets themselves you'll notice they have these little tiny squares with holes in the center. Those are going to line up perfectly with the kit itself. There's also an indicator number onto it here that says left hand side and right hand side. In our bag of parts find the four coarse head screws that are in there and screw those into place. I suggest when building the kit you use a regular Phillips screwdriver so that you can control your torque. I'm gonna put my spare screws and clips in the bigger bag that it came with so as to not lose them. Install the CH4A JW18 into place. Grab your bag of zip ties, pull out four of them. With the model number located at the bottom, zip tie it and suspend it in place here. Thread your zip ties through the unit itself, pulling it back through the hole and loosely pull it into place. Do that on the other three. The reason we're threading them through that way is so that the zip tie head will be located on the bigger piece of kit plastic and won't get in the way. Start slowly cinching the zip ties into place. As you can see, those heads now are located onto this flatter surface and that the back of this is still going to be perfectly flat. Use flush cutters to cut the legs off of the zip ties. With your main brain in hand, mount it with the harnesses located towards the bottom. The Sirius XM logo here should be located up against the top corner. Use the four fine thread screws that came in the parts bag. With the four screws in, this is what you're going to end up with. The main unit should be nice and tight. As you can see, I can hold it through here. GPS SD card is located into the back corner. Note to self, if you are gonna be adding GPS to it, it's not something you're gonna be doing after the fact. Make sure you do it before you install this into the car. Grab your main mounting bracket that you're gonna be using for your build. In this case, we're doing the high 10. Flip it over to the back. Those orange clips, click all six of them into place, and then set this back aside. We're gonna move on to attaching our harnesses to the main brain box and the unit itself. The big harness that came with the kit is going to be pre-wired for the car and the radio. What does that mean? We're not gonna to need to use the main power harness for the radio. It will be the first part we put back into our parts box. I like to do a dry run when assembling this, meaning just kind of plug everything into place and see what it looks like. So with the first harness plugged in, it's time to evaluate what we have going on. The main harness located in this corner here is unique in that it will only plug into this side. On the opposite side of that is the speaker harness. There's two inputs located on this harness that are identical. And if you plug this into the wrong one, it might not work properly. The top one is for the factory amplified system. The bottom one is for the non-amplified system. The next plug down is our data connection plug. On the radio brain itself, there's 
the master harness, as well as one of the 10 pin AV harnesses, which is also this harness here, which can go in the box now. On the end, there's a bunch of RCAs located here. This is our OEM aux input, camera three input, camera two input, aftermarket camera power for powering up any cameras you wanna add, camera four input. Off of each one of these is a trigger so that you can tie into it and have like a turn signal or an external switch turn these cameras on for you. There's a set of yellow wires, one with a red and one with a brown. It's for our pack link module. Then our steering wheel control output is located here as well. Lastly on here is the main power harness that plugs in in the bottom. And this is what we end up with. Now I'm just gonna set this aside for right now. I'm going to come back, clean up this wiring harness some more, but I want to keep moving along to finish plugging everything in. We are gonna be retaining his Sirius XM on the back of the radio. That is going to plug in below the 10 pin. The six pin harness that has the SWI is for our steering wheel controls. That'll be located next to our 10 pin. The main AV harness. This is gonna get plugged in below our main power harness. On it are a ton of RCAs. I like to break them into their pairs. Front out is gray, rear out is green, sub out is black. And as you can see, they're a decent length. They're probably the longest I've ever seen any radio have. Video out and zone two audio out. Rear camera in, aux in, video two out, and then some steering wheel control wires that will not be getting used. Add those into their own bundle. And that leaves us aux in, back to the main harness harness, there was a set of RCAs. These are your auxiliary outputs. These plug into our aux inputs. This will allow us to retain that factory aux on the dash. The last harness I have over on my table of parts is the microphone input for our hands-free mic. In the bottom corner, you'll see the last four pin plug input. Once we get into the car and get our microphone ran, it will plug into the black input. This takes us to the first stopping point. These are the main plugs for the unit itself between these two pieces. There's still peripherals that need to be hooked up, but at this point I'm comfortable enough with what I've done to where I'm gonna pull it all back apart and pretty up this harness so it doesn't look like this. With the wiring a bit more manageable, we'll move on to the next step. That is gonna be adding in our two screen cables, blue USB here and the black eight pin harness. Turn the unit on its side. They're located here and here. And these will come up through the bracket here. To retain the high def camera, it's time to install the RPA HD1. On the back, there's some dip switches. Make sure they're all in the up position so that they all go towards the sticker here on the top. I like to put a piece of tape over those so that they don't get bumped. We're also gonna need our PacLink EL1 module, the 12 inch HDMI cable, our 18 inch cable, as well as our six inch cable, and the two pieces of double sided tape. Take one of the pieces is a double-sided tape and attach it to the bottom of the PL. Take the pack link, the twisted yellow wires, plug them into the right side. It is gonna be stuck right here, but for right now we're just plugging things in to make sure we have everything where it needs to go. The six inch cable, there is one towards the power here that is still not having anything plugged into it. That's where this is going to plug in. Plug that into the top input on our PL1. Take the 18 inch version of the cable, plug that into the open spot on the PL1 one and that is going to plug into our HD one next to our camera inputs. Your HDMI 12 inch, flip up the unit and plug that into the HDMI input, plug that into the HDMI output. This is what's gonna feed into the radio. Coming back over to our desk, as you can see from the beginning till now, we're definitely reducing the amount of stuff. What's still left is our speaker, our USB connections, our antenna adapters, some screws, GPS antenna and microphone. This this is the cable we're going to need next. This cable is going to talk to the data bus in the car. It has this four pin end on it here. Where this is gonna plug in is on the main harness. There is already one plugged in together. Unplug that and then plug it in. It is directional, so make sure you plug it in the right direction. There's a little tiny clip here and there's a little tiny tooth on this end and they go in together. If you put it in upside down or sideways or something like that, you're gonna run into issues and could cause some damage. The reason why this comes already plugged together like this is 
this brain is actually compatible with multiple platforms. In this particular platform, the data we're looking for is not on it. We have to go get it. And with that, let's hop into the car and I'll show you where to get it from. Inside the glove box, you'll see the green tray and the white tray. The green tray has white clips and the white tray has green clips. On our end, it's the same white and green clips. This is the data hub in the car. It has openings that we can plug into it. Plug your green into the white and your white into the green. If for some reason your Jeep didn't have an open spot on it, they have two connectors here. You can unplug one, plug it into it, and then plug that back into the board. Take the end and then snake that up back into behind the radio here. And since we're in the car, let's keep going with all the other things that we need to add on, such as the GPS antenna, the hands-free microphone, and our speaker, as well as our two USB cables. We'll start with the GPS antenna because that's located the farthest from the radio. And as we move forward, we can plug in all the other devices. To mount the GPS antenna, uncoil it from its pack, its bundle. Right where my finger is located, you'll notice a slight notch. It's a U shape like this. Mount the antenna on top of that and then have the wire come inside that notch. It'll come behind this panel here that will tape it into place so it doesn't interfere with this here or the screw provisions and then bring it all the way over to our A pillar where we'll catch up with our hands-free microphone that'll get mounted here. The easiest thing to do is feed the blue wire through first and pull all your excess. Pull this panel back, ran behind the panel. We've secured it, putting tape where the pins are gonna be. Once we get over to the A pillar, we can zip tie it in with the factory harness. Pull back the mirror panel, slide the microphone into place, and then mount the wire up into the factory panel. Once you get it over into the corner, grab both wires and zip tie them onto the main harness. To mount the speaker into place, remove the two knobs from the side, freeing the bracket. That piece of tape and and the two wing nuts are for mounting this in place. We're gonna need a drill bit to drill the two holes for the bracket. Underneath the dash, there's a front metal bracket here and a back metal bracket here. That's where we want to drill our holes. Stick the bracket into place, drill the two holes, put your screws through, and add the wing nuts to the back. What you'll end up with is a speaker that looks just like this, aiming down. Take the microphone and GPS wiring, run it down the inside of the dash, grab this, and then move that back up into the radio so that you've created a harness that has all three wires coming into it up into the the radio cavity. In the beginning, we talked about the antennas. The thicker one is your FM antenna, which is provided. There is a tooth on it. Click it into place. Make sure that it snaps and give it a slight tug. Go to the blue antenna, plug in your SAT-01. There's a tooth also. Give it a slight tug to make sure that it is locked into place. To retain the Sirius XM, you're gonna need an SVX 300 add-on Sirius XM tuner. Part we'll need is this, the tuner. You also wanna make sure that you keep this box. It has your ESN number on for when you go to activate your service. The shorter of the two USB cables, the one with the gray end, plugs into the factory gray USB adapter. While running our wires, easier we found to remove this panel as well. It's attached by one screw here in the center, that same seven millimeter, and then it just pops off. This made it a little bit easier to run our Bluetooth mic, GPS antenna, and speaker over. In the back, we still need to plug in our USB. We're gonna retain that factory socket, go up the passenger side of the car with it, move the factory wiring out of the way, plug in the USB. Sliding the seat all the way forward will give you the easiest route to do that. Snake it down to the floor and then this edge right here and up this side panel until you get it into the dash. All the wires are ran. That means it's time to bring in our main unit and start getting it plugged into place. First thing to plug in is our data connection that we brought over from the glove box to our main harness, FM antenna. Our USBs need to go in a specific order. The gray USB, the shorter one goes in USB 1, which is in the middle of the radio. The black USB is gonna go into USB 2, which is closest to the outside of the radio. Sirius XM. Our blue GPS antenna plugs into the corner here. Microphone, our black plug that says mic. The speaker wire is going to plug into the front. We'll come back to that. The red antenna looking and here is for our backup camera. On our backup camera brain, the HD1, plug it into the cam one input. 
When you're trying to get this into the dash, we've located the HD1 in this portion, pushed all the RCAs up into above this air vent. The main harness is located over here behind this air vent. You kind of have to spread everything out. Once you're going to slide it in, start with the bottom, start with the bottom and push it in from the bottom and then up to the top. You may have to take it in and out, just moving wires out of the way, but whatever you do, don't forget to leave the speaker wire in the front here and plug it into the white harness coming off of the speaker wire harness. Our main harnesses are left out here. This is for our screen. We need to do some testing, plug back in the start and air conditioning controls. We haven't mounted the home screen into the bracket yet. I just wanna test everything before we go that far. The blue cable plugs into the gray input and our eight pin plugs in right above it. Turn on the car. We got a backup camera. What's the weather like today? Temperatures are heading down. Test your knobs. Test the steering wheel control knobs. With all the testing done, I'm gonna head over to the bench and get this mounted into place. In the kit, you'll notice these four screw holes here and a hole. Those are gonna line up with the screw holes located on the back of the radio. Slide the two into place, flip it over. Make sure to set it on something that won't scratch the kit. Grabbing the four screws that have like the washer attached to them, just kinda looks like there's a washer. Screw those into place. Our screen is mounted. It's going to snap into place and then the two factory screws will go back in. The next step is to go into the settings and make sure that the unit is all up to date. On the main page, there's a setting icon. Select system settings and on the bottom it says installer settings. Enter, type in 0052, okay. System information. And on this page, it's gonna give us all our information about the unit. Head over to stingerelectronics.com to the high 10 page. And down here, it says new firmware. Once you click on it, it'll give you the firmware date code. In this case, December 1st of 20. How the date code on the radio is broken apart, according to the instruction manual, the first four digits are going to be your year, which is 2020. The next two digits are going to be the month, in this case is 9, and ours matches this. The last two are going to be the date of 27. According to their website, they do have a firmware update that was released on 12 of 01. So our radio is out of date and we'll need to do an update. To do the update, if you follow the next page, it will walk you through for both Windows and Mac. You will need a four gig USB drive. I have my thumb drive. According to the instructions, you can plug it into either USB input. System update is first. Select update. This could take anywhere between six to eight minutes. While it's doing its update on pages six and seven of the installation manual, we'll describe everything that is gonna happen during this install. This is gonna update, it's gonna reboot. We're gonna hit the reset button located here in the corner. Once that's done and it reboots itself, we're gonna turn the car off. We're gonna lock the doors and wait 10 minutes. Once we come back from all of that, we'll go back into our settings and check to make sure that it is updated to the most current firmware and that everything we did actually worked. Step one is done. The unit has downloaded and restarted. Press the reset button. The reset according to the instructions should take one to two minutes. We're waiting for when that radio source pops back on. Now that it's popped back on, turn the car off. We're going to step out and lock the car. We're gonna leave it off 10 minutes. This will allow everything in the car to go to sleep and then reboot. Updates contained in what we just did are also going to load into the brain boxes for the radio. So it's a full update. 10 minutes have passed. We can now come back into here and we see our new firmware loaded in there. With our radio done updating and everything is current, everything works, the last step is to move this guy up into place and then we'll get to see all the cool extra features that this radio adds to the Jeep. There's some really cool stuff. The unit is snapped into place. As you can see, the fit and finish on it is rather nice. What we wanna do is dig into some of the custom menus that are now available to us. If you tap the screen here, it's gonna pull up your seven presets. You can customize these in the menu and we've already set ours up. The first one is climate control. Once in the climate control page, you can see here it gives us this really nice looking interior of the car. Either work the knob here, and as you'll see, you'll get a graphical representation on the screen, or you can use the buttons across the top. You can adjust your temperatures here, or you can tap the screen. 
and you'll get the temperature display. Select the back arrow, vehicle information. This is one of the coolest features. It knows that it's in a Gladiator, so it has set it up to look like that. As we can see here, it's displaying our tire pressure as well as the passenger door is open. If you open a door, It'll show you the door is open. It'll also tell you the state of your drive, in this case, two-wheel drive, give you your longitude, latitude, altitude, and tire angle. Next is gauges. You have eight gauges to look at, from battery voltage, oil temperature, oil pressure, trans temp, coolant temp, fuel pressure, intake, air temp, and engine calculated load. Performance is next. This is gonna give you your speed, as well as your RPMs. Your last zero to 60 time. Off-road is going to tell you your pitch and roll, and of course, what direction you're heading. And if you'd like to monitor your drive chain, that's also here. One other feature built into this is you'll notice there's a camera tab. If you press it, it's going to pull up the backup camera as well as give you your pitch and roll icons as well. There's a plus icon in the top left. This will give you an overhead view of your hitch. Tap it to make it go away. Tap the screen. On the right side, you'll see where it says off-road. That'll remove your pitch and roll. Tap it again to turn it on. And then on the left-hand side, you'll notice a back arrow. That'll make it go back to your previous page. There's a back arrow on this as well. And we're back onto our tuner. Let's take a look at that sexy camera. There's a couple different ways you can access it. Obviously, by putting the car in reverse, we'll bring it up. What we just showed you in the vehicle information page, as well as clicking the button again, We've programmed in one of our seven buttons as camera. And there it is. It's coming in through the HDMI port on the back of the radio. You have access to that tag down look. And when you're done, same process. Tap the screen, hit the back arrow. Just like on the air conditioner, when you adjust these, it would work the air conditioner. You also can use these to control the radio. So your volume still works, your mute works, screen off still functions and channel up and down still goes channel up and down. A couple other features that this radio has in the menu systems, if you select home, settings, vehicle settings, you have a whole list of things that you have options. Camera settings, driver assistance, mirrors and wipers, lights, door locks, engine off options, pack enabled settings, and tire fill alerts. One of them that a lot of you will be interested in is the pack enabled settings. Auto stop start memory. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. That means if you're not a fan of when you pull up to a stoplight and the engine shuts down, you can deactivate that in this radio. It's kind of a really cool feature. All right, guys, that is the new Jeep Wrangler JL and the Gladiator dash kit from PAC using their Stinger High 10. Adds a lot of cool features to your dash. Definitely an improvement from that little tiny five inch screen that was in oh, the dash. I'm saying yes. We've doubled the real estate. And add more features. What a wonderful world. We hope you enjoyed this. Fernando, if you please. On to the next one, guys. You guys have a great day as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye.